Okay, guys, what's up? OCD Mikey Hi-Fi Guy. I think I'm just gonna do this. Okay, this will be our this will be our gang sign from now on. Uh, it's a peace sign sideways going over your eye because I am about peace. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Anyways, so what's up? OCD Mikey Hi-Fi Guy here, and um, I want to get with you all on my overall response from this last um, show that was at, uh, at Expona 2022. And um, I'd like to say that, you know, un unfortunately, I came back from this show feeling like I never wanna go to one of these shows again. Um, and it's not because of the people, okay? You know, that's the best part. The best part is seeing you guys and, um, seeing the other people in the industry that I haven't seen in a long time. Uh, and, 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 and quite frankly, the dinners are the best part of Expona. The dinners were the best part of Expona. So, um, you know, uh, I was with artist, painter, photographer, uh, musician. Um, I mean, we had such a great group, financial analyst, uh, data guy, um, flight attendant uh, and, and design uh, a person it, it's like it was it was such a mix we had black Vietnamese or Thai black Thai uh, white boy I'm, I'm actually Latino so Latino white boy speaking four different languages there between us that's what it's all about okay so it's about the relationships. It's about the camaraderie, and it's about the friendship. Uh, and bottom line, what we all share is it's about the music, okay? Um, that is totally missed by the show, 100%. I don't care if they hire a band, okay? What are the discussions about? The discussions are about the gear, okay? Now let me tell you why I feel this is a failure, okay? Um, one, um, first of all, my, heart's, my heart goes out to the dealers that come every year, that schlep their stuff over there, try and set up in two days in a room, and try and expect, and, and, and people come there expecting that they're gonna get a good representation of what that stuff sounds like, okay? You're not going to get a good representation of what any gear sounds like at a show. I will say that again. Do not go to a show if you're trying to make a buying decision about what something sounds like. Because I will guarantee you, it does not sound like that in your house. It does not sound like that in your room. You're in a hotel room, crammed in a hotel room, trying to imagine what something's gonna sound like in your house. Good luck, okay? You're not gonna get the proper representation. I heard a lot of killer stuff that sounded crappy, and I heard a lot of crappy stuff that sounded pretty good, okay? And I'll go through this, okay? Here's the deal at the show. What the people are trying to do, all they're trying to do, okay, is trying to get things to center in the image. They don't give a crap about anything else. This is my feeling. This is how it felt when I went there. When I went into the rooms, they all sounded good, okay? So first of all, we're at a hi-fi convention. Of course it sounds good. Everything sounds freaking very good, okay? Outside of a couple rooms that were just, and I'll go into that later, that were really bad rooms and embarrassing in my opinion. Um, other than a couple rooms, everything else sounds freaking great. It's hi-fi, man. It better sound great, okay? The differences in the rooms that I heard that I was listening for are a couple things. One, which rooms had bass fill and which ones didn't, okay? And to me, that's weak, okay? I know there's so many variables that will determine bass fill or not bass fill that I don't even really give it much credit other than if people get the bass fill right, it means they spent the time to get it right. In the other rooms, if they didn't get it right, it probably means they just threw the thing together and just let her rip and they didn't really go any further than that, okay? Those rooms are kind of evident, um, and the, so, so there won't, it, it's like, 
They all had center image. I'll tell you what, they all had center image, okay? So everybody tries to get the center image. They get that handled. And then the variance between the rooms were which ones had base, which ones didn't have base. So you could go in, everything had a center image. It all was contained like into this little area in between the speakers. Um, so basically, out of 90% of the rooms, all you were doing is evaluating, does it have base fill or not? Because we have the clarity, everything's clear. There isn't one room that's not clear, okay? Everything has terrific clarity and great resolution, okay? Some has better separation and delineation between them, and then the really good rooms make the speakers disappear. That's where you're listening to the music, and if you look at the two speakers and you try and imagine that the sound's coming out of those speakers, it's very hard to believe. You're like, there's no way there's, the sound is coming from those two speakers because it's all in here everywhere else, and I can't echolocate to those speakers any of the sound. Okay, the other rooms will have something dead center, like a vocal, but you can echolocate the instruments and other things to the speakers. Okay, there was some pretty big name rooms where I was echolocating to the speakers and the speakers did not disappear. Um, one of those rooms was Synergistic Research. And God bless Ted, uh, Denny, man, the guy gets mad respect from me. Okay, that man has done with hi fi exactly kudos to that guy, man. He's taken it to the limit, okay? He has gotten into the heads of audiophile craziness and has marketed that better than any company I know. The guy is P.T. Barnum. He is an amazing, he has done an amazing thing. This guy is a marketing genius, okay? I mean, he's, he's doing it, let's put it that way. Everybody else knows it, maybe, people know it, but Ted Denny put the rubber to, put the pedal to the metal and the rubber to the ground. And so kudos, but his room, it wasn't that great. It was, it was very done up, a lot of time and money spent on it. You had to run through the gauntlet of sales guys, the closers, uh, on your way in and out of the room. Bravo, man, that is just like smart shit, okay? Um, but the room was just like, eh, it wasn't that great. It was magicos, it was whatever else was in there. Yeah, all the magic little, you know, the little Saturn globe thingies and stuff. And it sounded like, very very pretty it was very pretty sound it was there was a center vocal right in the center but we could still hear the speakers they were not disappearing okay and um the great rooms the speakers completely disappeared um there was some rooms there was a guy um sadna audio from uh from uh, uh colorado okay his speakers looked really they were ugly okay Blessings to you, my friend. Satsriyakal. It sounded phenomenal. His speakers completely disappeared. The guy has massive passion. He's got so much passion for what he's doing that he came to the show with speakers that were essentially his prototypes, okay? You know a prototype when you see it, okay? It's got fabric on the top. He uses fabric to help offset. I mean, this guy has super passion okay um the speakers completely disappeared you go in the room you don't even you can't even locate to the speaker um and he was selling them for like forty five hundred dollars now i would say maybe wait until he's got his production in place because there might be production issues i'd imagine with somebody that brings their prototype to the show but my heart goes out to that guy okay um uh some of the rooms where the speakers that were embarrassing, okay? Uh, and I'm kind of jumping around, I know, I'm not, I'm not following really hard, because I don't follow scripts, so I bounce around. Um, the rooms that are, and let me preface this comment before I go into the rooms that I felt were embarrassing. Let me preface this by saying, this is just my opinion, okay? I'm not saying that I'm right. I'm not saying my opinion is correct. Um, I could be totally wrong with what I'm gonna say right now, okay? So um, take it for what it's worth. It's my perception, okay? The Klipsch room was completely embarrassing, total embarrassment. I went in there, it total high mid energy, overbearing in the room. They've got horns. Of course it's gonna be overbearing high mid. You have to tune a horned room so that it doesn't do that, okay? I went in, I started asking questions to top level uh, uh, a brass, 
you know, clearly senior level from AudioQuest. He was in the room sitting right there at the important table off to the side. And I was asking questions about the digital readout you could see on the amplifiers where the bass sucked out and the mid and highs were up, up. And I said, are we getting a bass suck out like this? Like this feels off, like what am I seeing? He started trying to describe uh, vertical biamp. He, 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 he didn't understand my question. I said, no, 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 and I, and I corrected him. And he said, well, no, it's vertical biamp. So clearly, I'm like, dude, I have quad biamp at my place, active quad biamp. I understand what, what I, quad, not quad biamp. I have active quad amp at my, at my, in my rig. So I know what biamp is. I've got quad amp. I get it, dude. He could not wrap his head around what I was asking. He had no idea about room tuning. He had no idea about the frequency and the suck out and anything that I was talking about, which goes to show this is typical for the rooms with those big corporate entities that I talk about. They should not let the corporate guys come and talk with, interface with us audiophiles. We know far more than they do about room setup. And these are the big illustrious companies and they've got guys out there that are making, I'm sure they're making a ton of dough, they're marketing guys or whatever they are, but they don't know crap about setting up a room. I said, I started asking about the crossover. He pointed to where the crossover was. I said, well, what, do, there's a big dial and a little dial. What are they, what's the difference? I don't, and he couldn't even answer. He's, I, I don't know, it was too much for him. I said, let me go over there. I'll look at the nomenclature and figure it out. I go and I look at the crossover. Both are pinned at zero. They're both at exact 12 noon, the low gain and the high gain. They did not even try and tune for that room. So the Clips room, if you went in there, was not tuned. That was some jokers setting up a rig, not even setting the settings on it, just leaving them at zero. How ridiculous is that? Shame on you. I mean, you guys are supposed to be the leaders in the industry, and you're, you're showing us shit that's not even tuned? Man, now you see why I brush these companies off, man. This is what they do. They're corporate entities. All they care about is profit. They don't care about tuning a room. They don't care about getting it right. They just care about the bottom line number at the end of the day. And all these people come walking in and they think it's great because they've got these commercial level jubilees, which are supposed to be in commercial movie theaters and stuff like that. Theaters, um, you know, uh, uh, amphitheater, whatever they, they put them in. It's a commercial speaker. When it's commercial and it's painted in black, it's $22,000. When it's got a, a veneer on that black face, it's $32,000, $38,000. They mark it up. They double it, basically. Um, so that's what you get in our industry. You get these companies that are charlatans that act like they're all that they have the kudo they have the, the the time in the industry for all that and 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 then they don't tune a room okay again my opinion my perception i could be totally wrong they could be the best thing that's ever happened to hi-fi and i just don't know my head from a hole in the ground okay just making that clear okay pinned at 12 not tuned okay i go into another room Klipsch, or no, 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 um, Focal. I go into the Focal room. Um, just embarrassing. Beautiful room, super cool catalog when I walked in. They've got speakers for everything, man. Toilet bowl speaker, fish tank speaker, tire speaker for your car. I mean, I'm, I'm embellishing, of course, but what I'm saying is they've got in-wall speakers, speakers for the kitchen, speakers for the ceiling, speakers for everything, okay? This is a well-put-together company, man. I mean, these guys are hitters okay there's no question about it but leave it to hi-fi there is something to be desired those are beautiful big speakers they sounded threadbare yeah they had bass what I mean by threadbare is there's no soul to it it's like vacant okay yeah it's got boom yeah it's got clarity yeah it's imaging but it has no connection to the music there is no it's 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 mechanical you go in there and the sound is mechanical Boom, crash, woo, ah, pretty, mmm, $200,000, woo, ah, uh, ah, no soul, okay? No music, okay? For people that, uh, I'm not gonna go into, I'm not gonna go into that. So, again, my opinion could be totally wrong.
Focal may be the best thing that ever happened to Hi-Fi. I might not know my head from a hole in the ground, okay? Um, so uh, the shows are a false representation of what you will be hearing, okay? They don't tune the rooms. You expect guys to come in and in two days make a room sound good when we tune our rooms for years and, and now two days you're going to come in and make something that you're going to try and use as an example to sell with? It's horrible, okay? So that's one aspect of it. It's fun, yes. If you've not gone, I say go. Check it out if your local guys show up. But don't travel there thinking you're going to determine what your next amplifier is. It's going to be a horrible representation. You need to try the stuff in your own rig. That's the only way you can do it. I know it's a pain in the ass, but you have to have it in your own rig, in your own house, to determine if it's going to do what you want it to do. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's no way around it. You must have it in your own rig. You can't shortcut that deal. If you do, you will be sorry. Okay? Again, my opinion. Um, so, the other thing, from a dealer standpoint, from the, from the exhibitor standpoint, not this, this, uh, that was from the attendee, obviously, standpoint. Uh, we still have pollen out here. Um, anyways, so, from the exhibitor standpoint, look, man, you guys are getting taken to the bank. Okay? Screw these big corporate guys. They can afford it. It doesn't matter. But you know what? Look, you guys spend four or five grand for these rooms for a joke of a room. You're supposed to schlep all your stuff from all over. Probably pay drayage to bring that crap up to the room. You're gonna pay $800 for internet. You're gonna get jabbed with the fist any way you turn, brother. And what are they gonna give you in return? Are they gonna run an ad in the Chicago Star Tribune to attract people to come to the show? I didn't see one. I know people that lived in Chicago. They asked their friends. Nobody knew about that damn show. The drivers from Uber, nobody knew about the show. What that means and what that tells you is the show organizers did not advertise the damn show, okay? If they did, prove it, okay? But from what I found out, there's no promotion of the show. No local people come that don't know about it. And that's what they promise you. They promise you new blood. Do you get new blood? No, you get zero blood. It's zero ROI. It's a, it's a, it's a throw away your money, okay? This show circuit is diving, okay? How am I gonna go to a show and I don't have Ivana Manley in her motorcycle boots and her damn motorcycle jacket staggering around, hugging people and giving us some juice that we only can get from Ivana. How are you gonna have a show without Ivana? How are you gonna have a show without Jeff Rowland, the gentle giant walking around? Jeff, such a nice guy, such a Zen master of hi-fi is not at the show. Uh, Luke Manley. We, I see Luke Manley at every show. Here, I'll bring the Manley name back. But Luke is always there. He doesn't say much, but he's there. It's good to know that one of our cornerstone people is there as well. My vivid audio guy, the guy with the ponytail, you know, who runs around. Uh, the, this is the guy that designed the um, Nautilus speakers for B&W. He's always there. He's not there. He wasn't there. I'm not seeing my regular peeps. I'm not seeing the peeps that are the real heart of hi-fi. What I'm seeing is corporate entity. What I'm seeing is the big corporate names that are gonna eventually take over the show and all the little guys that are the heart and soul are gonna not show up. They're gonna blow it off because honestly, we don't need it. The people that have the heart, we know one another, we find one another, we don't need the shows. There is no new blood for us at the shows. Look at Ralph Karsten. Cheers and, 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 and good vibes to Ralph Karsten. Still coming to the show. The man's been doing this for 50 years. He's like Jeff Rowland, same thing, 50 years in the business, man. Um, he brings his amps. He's got killer little amplifiers, Class D, $5,000, $5,500. Um, 
I'll grab some of those. I mean, Atmosphere. They make huge tube amps. He told me when I talked with him, I tried to make a design out of Class D, GAN, gallium nitride, that beats every tube amp I've ever made, and I succeeded. That's a heavy statement, okay? I was able to listen to that. I saw Jim White from, uh, from Aesthetics. It was good to see Jim. Uh, these are people that I consider my peeps, okay? It's not Focal. It's not Sonus. It's not Boulder. It's not... Uh, it's not... I mean, I didn't even see Costa from Sim Audio. Uh, I did see Lionel, but he's not with them anymore. Um, it's like things are falling apart, man. If you guys think that this show is happening, um, you don't have enough experience to know that it's on a demise, okay? Because these shows are on a wicked demise. I'm not going to Axpona again. I will not go back. I might go to uh, Capital to check it out just to make sure that I don't want to go to any more shows because at this point, not my scene anymore. It's I'm out. There's no heart there anymore. It's just like, and now I'm not talking about the people, okay? The attendees are the good part, okay? And you should go to see the spectacle, go hang out with your friends, have the dinners, all that kind of stuff. Look, I'm going to have friends with hi-fi dinner. Or, or, <laughs> I'm going to have dinners with hi-fi friends, and we're going to do stuff like ride our motorcycles, man. A lot of my peeps ride bikes. Jeff Rowland rides an enduro. I ride an enduro. It's right over there. Um, I've also got a sport touring bike. I've also got a cruiser, a big V-twin. So it's like, uh, and, and I talk to many people that ride. It's funny. You ride, do photography, detail cars, into cars. There's We're into certain things, right, as hi-fi people. But um, to think that you're going to go to the show and get really good sound. Look, if you're listening for, you know, um, um, something to be clear, sounding, clarity, everything's clear. Something to be dynamic and boom, blow you out of your seat. I can do that from Guitar Center. I don't need a hi-fi rig for to blow you out of your seat with dynamic punch. What you don't hear is dynamic contrast, okay? You hear about dynamic punch, but the, when you really know what's up, you talk about dynamic contrast, okay? You talk about the nuance in dynamic, the middle part, not just the boom, uh, uh. I mean, I can go punch you. That's not dynamic contrast. That's dynamic punch. And that is, I can do that with a tune box. I can do that with a guitar center system, okay? Um, center image, easy, easy to do. It all has to do with placing your speakers. If you're a half ass, you can do center image. And, uh, and, and uh, bass, come on. We all know we can add big subwoofers to make bass. We all know we can port the, 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 the box to make more bass. Um, it's about having tonally correct, tonal density in the music. Bass that is a foundational fill, not just a boom, okay? Um, these rigs don't get it right. They don't get it. You can't do that in two days and expect to get it right. So the show is a joke, quite honestly. It's fun to go to, but it's like a circus, okay? Um, I feel really bad for the exhibitors because you guys put your heart and your soul into this, especially the new guys. And, and, and you can meet some people. Go to a couple shows if you're brand new to meet people, but you can even, you know, look at Magnapan. They're not even in the show. I don't even know if they pay the show for a room. They just go get a room and they don't have a sign on the outside. Let people come in. I listened to the LRS. The LRS was no different than any other Magnapan I've ever heard. It sounds freaking great, okay? And we go in and they tell us, it's not about the sales. We're not trying to get the sales. You can't buy these right now, but we're gonna let you hear them. Okay, there's something wrong with that. Whatever it is, I love Magnapan. I love the speaker. It, there is no better value in loudspeakers. But the way they do things is like on a different planet, okay? That's all I'll say about that. I did sit in that room. So um, anyways, I am going to bring you guys something. I feel that it's my responsibility to improve. I improved on giving you guys the truth and you guys hear the straight dope from me. Um, I talked with many dealers at the show that supported what I'm doing and gave me kudos and support along with the end users who, of course, you guys show me your support. Um, you don't have to subscribe. You don't have to click the button on the top, okay? Because that's not what I'm here for. That is that. Thanks for joining. And uh, OCD Mikey signing out. See you.
Hey guys, uh, I forgot to add, if you don't believe me about like how uh, non-serious the sound is at the show, uh, why don't you look at Griffin? Griffin has a static display, okay? Like this is a huge company all known about their excellence in products because they do ha uh, have an illustrious, nice uh, history. Um, they don't even have a rig. They're not even set up. That ought to tell you something. See you.